Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck. I teach parenting and child development, family communication and relationships all over the world through the lens of self-government. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 signs that your child has a screen addiction. So many parents are worried about screen addictions and rightly so. In fact, the data is in. We do know that screen addiction is a troubling thing for our children. There are some countries that are now saying children should not have screens if they are younger than this age because it's not good for their brains. So we know it's bad. So in this video, let's talk about what those screen addictions are doing to our children and how we can catch it so that we don't have to have that problem in our family. I'm not only gonna talk about the 10 signs that your child might have a screen addiction, but I'm also gonna tell you what you can do so that you can stop a screen addiction from occurring in the first place. Now, some of these 10 things might be obvious to you, but I think some of these 10 indicators actually might be surprising to you too. Some of these signs of a screen addiction may be different depending on the age of your child. So I'm going to give some just blanket signs that you can watch for. I'll try to be specific about the ages that they are most applicable for. But sometimes younger children behave a little differently when they're screen addicted than older children. Number one, this might be obvious, but actually you'd be surprised how many parents miss this. If your child is having a screen addiction, they're going to be asking for the screen all the time. Okay, they're gonna say, oh, can I get on the screen? That's a big one. And they'll make excuses for it too. They'll say like, well, but I, I didn't have my screen yesterday or I didn't have this screen, whatever. The fact that they are coming to you asking for it again and again means that their brain cannot go in any other direction. It is stuck. That's how you know it's an addiction. Another one that you might be aware of, in fact, this is very concerning to parents, is that children will actually not go to bed at night. So there have been videos done of even four-year-old children waking up in the night or pretending to be asleep for a while and then training themselves to wake up in the middle of the night, get their iPad, hide under their covers and play Minecraft. Yes, Minecraft is addicting. I'm gonna say that again, Minecraft is addicting. It's also a gateway into porn and a lot of other things. Many people don't realize how many porn videos are actually done with Minecraft. People who are very insidious are trying to find ways to reach our children where our children go. And so they look in some of those games and things that people use. So if your child is not going to bed at night or they are waking up in the middle of the night or they seem tired a lot, these are all signs that your child could be having a screen addiction. Another sign that often accompanies this nighttime problem is noticing that your screen, maybe it's your phone, your tablet or computer, is slightly different than it was before. Maybe it's in a different location or position just a little bit differently because someone actually was taking it. So oftentimes people will take the screens without permission. So that's a problem and you know the addiction is really bad if they're getting to the point where they have to wake up in the night and steal it in order to get a fix. That's, that's pretty bad. Number four, lying. Automatically, lying is going to follow this stealing, right, of the screens. Or there's this other kind of lying where they may go into a room or a different part of your house where there is a screen and you're not. They turn it on really low. And if they're going to a place where they normally play or do something else and there's no noise, and it seems like it's just too quiet, then it probably is too quiet. Okay, they are probably sneaking and then lying about it. So they're not telling you what's going on. It's a dishonest behavior. Oftentimes when parents will ask their children, hey, did you use this? Did you touch this? Oh no, I didn't. Oh, it was so-and-so. I saw so-and-so with it. So this is another thing. Number five, they try to make it look like everybody else has a screen addiction. In fact, this is a classic sign of almost any addiction is what we call the cover-up. When a person has a sex addiction and they see a movie that has like kissing on it or something like that, they're gonna be like, Oh, oh, that's so gross. Oh, oh, skip this part. But probably they're actually engaging in a lot of other things that they're viewing that are way, way worse. But they're trying to put up this image like they're not. So the same thing happens with screens where they might say something like, oh, let's, you know, let's plan to do something fun as a family, not just a movie. And then as you're talking about things, somehow it gets steered toward a movie or whatever it happens to be uh, that, that's on the screen. 
All right, before we go on to the next five signs, leave me a comment. What are things that you are seeing in your family? What are some signs? Maybe you've noticed even some other signs that are not on this list. I know every home is different, but if you list some of your signs that, and things you've noticed of screen addiction in your family in the comments below, then there might be other people who are clued into something else that I might not even mention here. Number six, going to somebody else's house all the time. If your child does not want to play at your house because you have a rule about screens and when they have friends over, they don't get to play with screens, then chances are they're choosing to go to somebody else's house because that person doesn't have the same rule. This is really sad that it happens all the time. And I tell parents, you know what? You've got to call that other parent up and say, you know what? My child has a screen addiction. We're working on it. I'm pretty sure my child is using your child for your screen. So if he's ever over there and he, you know, your child's asking for a screen. Can you just tell him no, unless he gets permission from me because we're really trying to help him conquer this addiction. Oh, whoa, that, that parent just learned some major deliberate behavior, right? For solving that problem. So that's huge. So if they're always wanting to go to somebody else's house or be with somebody else, mm, that's a sign. Number seven, they always talk about games and then they say, oh yeah, my friends, they do this game. They told me about it. Now that can be true, but if they are starting to use language that comes out of games or talks about certain videos, oh yeah, somebody told me about this video or whatever, and they're talking all about it, that's pretty much a sign that they are seeing that video on a regular basis or that they have at least seen it once. So just keep in mind, if they really can't talk about anything else besides something they've seen on a screen, you know you've got to get rid of those screens. So that's for if you don't know that they're, they've been seeing things with somebody else, but they could also be talking about everything that you're showing them. Okay, so you're watching videos as a family all the time, you know totally what they're seeing and that's still the only thing they can talk about. If they have no other communication things that they can talk about or interests, and that's always what they wanna do when they're bored, then you've got a problem. That brings me to number eight, they're always bored. There's nothing to do and so they have to have a screen. So they use this excuse, mom, there's no friends, there's nothing to do, I'm done with everything. Can't I watch this? And if they are constantly going to that as a go-to and talking about their boredom all the time, then you know that they have a screen addiction and I would actually call it a stimulation addiction. So when a person has to have a friend, a screen, a food, a something, that stimulates their senses in some way, you know they actually have a stimulation addiction. Another thing that happens with young children a lot is they start to have tantrums. This is because the parents will oftentimes put them in front of a screen in order to solve the tantrum. They don't wanna deal with it. So they wanna distract the child. Well, if your child just starts to be really out of control a lot or have tantrums a lot, then you know that probably they are doing that to get that screen if that's what you've been using it for in those types of circumstances. If your child does not want to go with you to places, then probably they have a screen addiction. So if they don't wanna go see grandma and grandpa, if they don't wanna go swimming, if they don't wanna go to the park, if they don't want to go ride their bike with you or go on a hike with you, then what are they wanting to do at home? I mean, they maybe have said they're bored. They probably want to have a screen. If they want you to leave so that they can be there alone, that usually means that they want a screen. Or if they just say, no, I don't wanna do that, I'm not in the mood, it's probably because they want to wait for a minute and then ask you for a screen. Children, just by their nature, want to have more experiences. The only reason they wouldn't have experiences and want to have more varied experiences is because they have been fed this stimulant that is just intoxicating them and stopping their developmental progress. And that's what screens can do for our children. We could go into more things, more signs that your child has a screen addiction, but I think the most important thing is what do I do about it? How do I stop the screen addiction? You're probably not gonna like the answer. You've probably heard it before, but you've gotta make sure that the screens get into check. It's okay to do a total fast, to detox from screens. It's okay to say, you know what? These are supposed to be tools, not toys. As long as we're looking as at digital devices or screens as toys and we're just wanting to fill our time with them, then we actually will be creating even more of a dependency. We won't be able to govern ourselves well with those 
items. So we need to, them to know these are tools that are used for a specific purpose and the purpose is not necessarily all of the just toy features, right? We send emails because of business. We look up a few things. We've got our maps. We might check our weather. There's a couple of things that we're going to do on there that relate to a tool capacity, but otherwise they end up becoming time wasters. And as parents, you might have to ask yourself the question, do I see this as a stimulant for me too? Do I see my phone as a toy? Am I using it as a toy or as a tool? And that's the thing. You've got to set the example and you've got to reinvent your family culture and your family life. If you would like more help reinventing your family culture and your family life, the best thing I can do for you is teach you the whole model of self-government. When a person learns self-government, they learn how to bond and unify with other people. Their hearts literally turn toward their families as they take ownership over their own behaviors. This actually stops a lot of conflict, increases the productivity and the unity within the family, and leads people toward less addictions because they're becoming more free by taking more ownership over all of their behaviors and thoughts. So in order to find out more about how you can learn self-government, then go to my class that I'm giving for free on this channel called The Not-So-Known Secret for Parenting Success. In that video, I will talk about key things you can teach your children so that they can learn how to accept no answers. When you say no for devices, they need to be able to accept it. And if they want a device, they need to be able to disagree appropriately with you about it. And your if your family is going to be making a policy about devices, you need to do it in a way where it will really stick. Those things are all part of the program that I teach. And that video will be a perfect start for you for getting into learning about self-government. So click on the link to the not so known secret to parenting success now, and I will see you there.